Hi, my name is Chris Brennan, and the purpose of this video is to show you how to use the extended chart selection on astro.com in order to generate a chart using uh, traditional style placements, such as whole sign houses, uh, the traditional rulership scheme, the major traditional aspects, and other things like the lot of fortune or the traditional decans or the traditional bounds or terms. So uh, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So you're going to want to go to astro.com and uh, ideally you already have a profile there so you can sign into your profile and then go to uh, free horoscopes and then go to extended chart selection. So the extended chart selection is really where you can do a lot of things on astro.com in order to customize your charts, in order to pick different layout styles, and generally just in order to um, you know, modify the chart display and make it different from their default style. So this is also where you can do things like if you're a modern astrologer where you can add asteroids or hypothetical planets or lots of other weird stuff like that. Uh, but for our purposes, we're going to use the extended chart selection today just to pick out a few um, sort of traditional things in order to have a more simple and sort of straightforward chart using some of those ancient techniques. All right, so on the extended chart selection page, you want to select your person who you're, you're looking at the chart for. Uh, today I've selected George R.R. R. Martin, who I just recently found out we actually have birth data for, uh, who's the author of the Game of Thrones uh, books and eventually the television series. So uh, there's a lot of different options in the extended chart selection and I'd recommend looking around uh, for a while in order to get familiar with it. So uh, we're going to stay on this page for now and initially in terms of the chart type there's some different options that you can do. There's also different drawing styles which are largely uh, things that will change just the appearance of the chart but won't change a lot of the points in it for the most part. Um, so one of the first things I often do is I change the house system and I set it, I change it from the default which is Placidus which is what is the most common form of house division in modern times and I change it to whole signs. So whole signs is the option for whole sign houses. Uh, then there's some other options that you can set. For example, uh, over in the left under additional objects, it says pars fortuna. So that's the part of fortune or the lot of fortune. You're going to want to turn that on. And it's going to default to reversing the calculation for the part of fortune for day and night charts. And that's actually what you want. There is an option under objects. If you click day formula for part of fortune, then what it's going to do is it's only going to use the daytime formula both for day and night charts. And although there are some traditional astrologers who advocate that, I actually strongly recommend that you leave it as the default. You do not select that box. That way it will reverse the calculation for day and night charts. There's actually a really good reason for that, which I'll go into in another video. Uh, so that's the part of fortune. In terms of other lots, you can't calculate a ton of other lots on astro.com. However, one of the things that you can do if you'd like to to calculate some of the other lots that were used in the Hellenistic tradition is you can go up to uh, the chart drawing style and then they just added this a few years ago, a chart drawing style that is astro deinst with Arabic points. And then you click, click here to show the chart and what it'll do is it'll calculate a chart uh, using their chart style, which will add in the seven hermetic lots, which were seven uh, Arabic parts or lots that were used in the early Hellenistic tradition. So this includes the part of fortune and the part of spirit, uh, but it also includes five other lots, such as the lot of Eros, the lot of Nemesis, Victory, Courage, uh, and Necessity. So most of those other lots are associated with one of the seven traditional planets. Uh, I have a whole paper on that which I'll link to in the description for this video so you don't need to get into it. Uh, the calculations are correct for the most part except for Eros and uh, what is it? It's Eros and Necessity I believe are using alternative calculations right now that come from 
uh, ones that I don't usually use. So I'm trying to get that fixed with the Astrodeanced people right now. But for the most part, I would just say all of the calculations for these lots are correct, except for Eros and Necessity. Uh, so we'll sort of set those aside, and I would say the other lots, like Spirit and Fortune, you're okay to use for now, but be a little bit more careful with Eros and Necessity at the present time. All right, so that's how you can calculate some lots, and Spirit and Fortune, of course, are very useful for certain timing techniques, like Zodiac releasing. Um, there's other traditional options. They recently added this whole section down here uh, not too long ago, titled Traditional Astrology Options in the Extended Chart Selection. So here you can do things that are kind of useful, like turn Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto off is kind of a useful option if you're just trying to do a traditional chart. Um, it has an option for the traditional decans, which is useful, or the Chaldean decans. Uh, both of these are, are pretty useful. Um, I don't recommend using the Manilius decans because nobody really uses those outside of Manilius. Um, for the terms, it lists three different, the three major systems of terms. The main one that the majority of Hellenistic and medieval astrologers used are the Egyptian terms, so that's what I'm going to turn on here. So turn Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto off, Chaldean decans on, Egyptian terms on, and then the other thing is you want to have it select just major aspects. So when you do that, it's going to ignore all of the modern or more recent minor aspects, such as the inconjunct, the semi-sextile, and all of that stuff, and it's just going to focus on the core major aspects from traditional astrology, which are the uh, conjunction, opposition, square, trine, and sextile. So once you do that, uh, and I've switched it back to web default style, you can go to click here to show the chart, and then it will generate a uh, nice but somewhat complicated looking chart that has the signs of the zodiac on the outside, the decans on the ins middle wheel, the uh, Egyptian terms on the inner wheel, and then it shows whole sign house placements for all of these. So this would be a relatively standard um, sort of traditional chart that you could use. And generally speaking, you could turn some of these options off if you're using them or if you're not using them. So for example, I'm not always using the decans, so sometimes I'll go back and I'll turn the decans off, and then I'll regenerate the chart, and it will spit out a chart that has just the 12 signs of the zodiac and then the five terms or bounds for each sign, and sometimes that's useful. Or other times, if you're not even using the bounds, you can go back and turn those off and then regenerate the chart, and then you'll just have a straightforward whole sign house chart, uh, if you've selected whole sign houses, that lists the lot of fortune if you've turned that on, and lists the seven traditional planets with just the major aspects. So, and that's pretty much it. This is probably the standard chart format that I would recommend using if you're trying to get into traditional astrology, especially Hellenistic astrology, which is just setting it to use whole sign houses, display just the seven traditional planets and the lot of fortune and maybe the north node, and then using whole sign houses and the traditional rulerships otherwise. So if you, if you do that, then you're pretty much all set to start reading some of the older texts and basically applying those techniques in practice. So there's a few other um, things that we could get into uh, in the extended chart selection in terms of other options that you can add, uh, like which node you want to use, whether you want to add the south node or the descending node, uh, whether you want to add some fixed stars and other things like that. There's just a ton of different options that you can use in the extended chart selection, but for the most part this is pretty much um, all you need to get started with traditional astrology is just a basic chart that just shows the signs and the houses that the seven traditional planets are in, uh, and then you're pretty much good to go. Alright, so I think that's it for this video. So that's how to use the extended chart selection in astro.com to calculate a traditional chart. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I get a chance. All right, well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.